moment. Here are my top tips to help you stop sabotaging your reactive dog training on walks. So I get a lot of clients that come to me who get very frustrated because they don't know how to break the cycle of events that occur and they don't realise how their behaviour impacts the behaviour of their dog. It's very easy to create poisoned cues for behaviour. This can be as simple as presenting your dog with a piece of food before they've seen the distraction. This in itself, if the distraction is scary, can make food a predictor that bad things are going to happen. So another typical thing that dog owners do, they see a potential unsafe situation and their response is to tighten up the lead, they've got more control of their dog. This immediately becomes a cue for something bad is going to happen and puts our dogs on high alert and creates more tension, more frustration, anxiety and a much faster negative reaction to something in the distance. So if you can avoid that and keep the lead as long as possible, that is going to have a significant impact on the way you deal with situations. When working with clients, we focus very much on positive based force free training. This is because we know it gets long-term behavior change. Don't be fooled into using what appears to be a quick fix, like a sharp yank of the lead or using something like a choke chain. Well, of course, if you choke your dog when they see another dog, they're not going to bark because they're choking. But that doesn't affect long-term behavior change. You're just adding another negative to an already bad experience for your dog. This creates shutdown dogs that can't express themselves and doesn't make the thing that they were barking at less scary or frustrating. It does not lead to long-term behavior change. As much as it's very important that in these situations, we are very predictable so our dogs feel safe around us and can predict how we are going to respond to situations, certain things don't help us. For example, if you only stop walking when you predict there's going to be a problem so that you can do a bit of training, you can guarantee every time you stop your dog is going to immediately look around for danger because that has become a cue that something bad is going to happen. If you're doing positive based training where you actually need to stop to input that training, make sure that you are regularly including little stops on walks when there are no distractions around so this doesn't become a powerful cue to your dog that something bad is going to happen in the environment around them. Strange as it sounds, the best results of reactivity training focus much less on those reactivity triggers around and much more on making walks predictable for our dogs before distractions are added in to make sure that we're not trying to force our dogs to take the tree or the toy because that can then become aversive in itself and not helpful when you're trying to change that dog's behavior just to add perspective from the things that I've talked about I am technically a crossover trainer so I used to use 16 years ago very harsh training methods I crossed over simply because I could see they didn't work they don't work because they don't relate to how dogs learn not only did I change over but I educated myself with two degrees to learn exactly why those methods hadn't been working and exactly why the new methods I was learning were effective in changing behavior long term hope that helps give some perspective and these tips are helpful for you on your training walks